Hey guys. Right, so I've got a little tip that may be of interest to some of you. Some of you out there. And the tip is about antenna mods on your transmitters. And you can see my transmitter here, it's on charge, so I'm not going to demonstrate the front of that to you, but I'm going to show you another transmitter. If you like the props, I'm going to be doing a video with these on tomorrow. And we'll see what they're like. But let me just tell you about these antenna upgrades. Now, I've got myself a new controller. And in this controller... Welcome to OpenTX. Lovely. And in this controller, let me just get out of that. And I've got a page... Uh, page 7. And down here it's got a thing, R-A-S, RAS. Well, really, that should say SWA. Or... In the long part of it was VSWR, Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. Now, what that does is it tells me how tuned the antenna is. And if you look, you can see it's just gone to 1. And if I put my hands around it, so 18, 17. And that lets me know whether this antenna is tuned or not to this. Because I've already taken it apart and modified it. I've taken its one out, and the idea was... I was going to put a 5db antenna on it. I mean this thing's good for range anyway the way it is. Uh, but let me show you. Let me show you what happens when I put a 5db antenna on. And I'll tell you why it happens as well. So I'll take that off. I'll grab it. it doesn't matter which one of these 5dbs I get. And they both do pretty much the same thing. So let me just put it there. And I'll turn it back on again. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay, I'll just skip past that, the file saves. Hold down my menu. Let's jump to page 7. And look at that look. 43, 46, 37, 4. It's not happy, so I'm just going to turn that off. That's telling me that the VSWR, the, the, the SWA, is going up. It's going high. It's not happy the signal, the return voltage back through the antenna into the system is enough to kill the, the, the transmitter, okay? And the better the transmitter, the more likely it is to kill it. So that's why that's gonna come straight back off. And just for my own peace of mind while I'm talking to you, I'm just gonna check um, that I'm still okay with this one. Welcome to OpenTX. Okay, let me just get past that. Uh, I've got page 7, and we're okay. Okay, so I know that, that this antenna is fine. This is just a regular 3 dBi antenna. All right, so now, why does that happen? Do you remember me telling you that when I use my transmitter here, and when I'm flying around, um, I'm going to just pull that out because I said it's charged. When I'm flying around, it feels like there's something wrong. You know, I get to a bit of a distance and it feels like I, I lose a bit of control. Uh -huh. You see, now I've found out why. And the problem is, is that these cables, or this size wire, no, here's one here. This is the sort of pigtail. It's the average sort of size. Maybe it might be slightly bigger, the ones that come with the, um, the mod kits for these you know that we've we've all bought a lot of us have bought them not all of us but a lot of us have bought them we've modded our antennas on here so we've got external antennas and they come with these little tiny lines but this is the problem because this has got too many losses in it and you need a thicker coax you need rg316 type coax rather than these really thin rubbishy coax i mean they're not rubbish they're fine for the no gain and the uh, 3 dbi just um but that's i don't know if any of you out there using these with 5 dbi antennas you're probably going to run into issues and you could actually damage your output on your transmitter side of your um, transceiver because it transmits and it receives so it's a transceiver technically it's a transceiver okay let's call it a controller to keep things uh, easy 
but so there you go. So if any of you have been trying to use the five DVIs, you've been running into issues, that's what the problem is. It's because you're trying to do too much gain through a little tiny cable like this and it's just blowing it out of balance and it's not happy at all and it could actually damage your set, your handset. So you need to keep that in mind. Right, okay, so let's get on to the sort of uh, and the bulk of this particular video. Now, I've named the video uh, My Hubson h 501 uh, s Alternative and that's exactly what it is. This is what it's about. So here we go, so nice and uh, I sit through for you. I did make this video earlier, but it was like over an hour and well, we don't want to sit through that. I didn't want to sit through it editing it. So, so what I've got here is I've got myself a frame and I'm going to show you the part that I've already put together because I was just trying to size up for how this is going to work. If I just stick that out of the way. I'll just put that way there. And I'm going to show you very quickly how this will go. Bum, bum, bum. This is going to be it's a 250, it's a ZMR 250 full carbon frame, and it's going to look something like this. And this will be this end, this is the forward end, and it's going to look something like that. So if it's going to have motors on, it's going to have ESCs, and it's going to have the battery on the top or the bottom, I'm not decided yet. Probably maybe a Mobius, but I'm not going to go for that just yet. I've decided that the minute it's going to be a run cam split. I haven't actually bought it yet, but that's what I'm looking at. Because the run cam split will give me a nice FPV feed, uh, nice and quick. And it'll also be recording in HD up on, on up to a 64 gigabyte card if I wish it to. You can do that recording at the same time on board, no extra cameras. So that's what I'm thinking, that's what I'm looking at at the moment. So, on it at the moment, I've got the power distribution board. So, this lets me feed in my power. It would actually be sat around like this, really coming in because it would be feeding my power, power off to ESC, power off to ESC, the, the chunky power off to ESC, off to ESC. And all the signals are done from the um, flight controller. And I've also got those BECs on here, um, which a lot of us will probably know them more similar to be like buck converters, but they're um, battery eliminated circuits. So I can get 12 volts, 5 volts, and I can connect up the, the camera uh, VTX and patch through the signal through. And you can also put a um, on screen display into the loop and everything else if you so desire to add the external on-screen on display. So there we go, that's a real quick look at the alternative that I'm going to have. So if my Hubson goes down for any reason, I'm going to have another something to be playing with, to um, hope you can see that, to be playing with and to be learning about. And it's going to hopefully, I mean it has been teaching me so far, different things about how these work anyway. now. Of the whole bunch of cables that connects up to receivers and such, I still gotta wait for the receiver to come through. So, the, as far as I've managed to get through, um, I've made myself up a little barrier plate because there's going to be some noise coming off this system here, and I don't want it getting in inside this. Now, this is the brains of, of the quad, and this is the flight controller. This flight controller. Um, it has a barometer on it, so I can have altitude hold. It has a GPS facility. Um, you need a an antenna for the GPS, but it do, it will cope with GPS. Um, and it's got a magnetometer as well, a magnetometer, magnetometer as well. So it's got just as much capabilities, really, as the Hubson for expandability like that. And I've been setting it up. If I just move you over here. And this is the piece of software I'm using to set it up. And as I move it around, that moves around, which is pretty darn fantastic. So I get to, as you can see here, I've got a gyro, accelerometer, magnetometer, and a barometer there. The GPS and sonar, I don't have modules for that connected, so and they're, uh, they're not very lit up there. But 
Yeah. Look at the sort of things you have, like on the on-screen display options. Check this out. Wow, that looks busy, doesn't it? Let's go in a little tiny bit. Just, oh, that's probably a bit too much. Sorry about that. Uh, so you've got all this for on-screen display, and if I just run down the, the edge there, you get to see all the different options. And there's quite a few there to playing around with. And so that means that you can switch those off so you don't have to have all those things on the screen. Because as you can see, especially with that written across there, it is very, very busy and probably a wee bit too busy for the most of us that want to use that sort of thing. So um, we got all sorts of, um, there's just all sorts in there. I mean, this is a whole, a whole new world. But the nice thing about it is that um, you get to control. You get to control so many things about your quad. So many things. So many things to look at. And in a way, I mean, it's pretty, I'd say not simple, but there are enough people out there with how-to videos showing how to do all this sort of stuff. Um, you can set up your fail saves. Uh, these are fail saves. So what happens when you... Um, quad goes out of range and because this controller I've got has got things like a, well it's got cables for R, RSSI so you get to actually see signal strength so before you actually go out of range you get to see that you could be going out of range so you get to do something about it uh, and then you get to decide what to do if you do actually go out of range and you want your, your quad to drop you can either get it just to drop out the sky basically or you can get it to land you can get it set up a throttle value so it just brings itself down nicely and you've got control of lots of different things lots of different auxiliaries to connect the receiver i've got for this and this controller will do 16 channels um so a lot of options with it and yes i realize it's a pretty expensive controller and but this isn't just going to do this I've got some electronics coming in which I can fit into the back here and it will also do my Hubson, it will also do my Sima and it will do many other um, models as well and of course I can even without the expansion card in there I can put up to 60 models in there anyway and have them all pre-configured so I just have to switch between models like I have on different flight simulators as well um, to be able to play with it. So absolutely loads of things, loads of things in here. Look at this look for setting up LEDs. I've got 32 LEDs remaining to set up. Check this out. Uh, if I press on the right button on my computer. So I can basically set up LEDs how I like. So if I just wanted some at the front, I could set those up uh, and click this, have them as white. I can put indicators on. So as the craft starts moving left, it'll indicate left, it moves right. If I pull up, it'll uh, put the brake lights on. Mm -hmm. Lots of lots of different things. There's just so much to it. This is this is what I want. I you know with the hope saying yeah it's okay, but look what happens when something goes wrong. You got to sit and wait around for so long for emails to be returned and you know just things just being messed around and look at this look so we're going to put the sensors on for the barometer the magnometer magnetometer i keep saying like that drummerton telescope so as i move we get to my get to see what's going on there and let's have a look what was going on on the barometer as well oh keep pressing that wrong button so even there yeah it's, it's you know, it's just fantastic, isn't it? I can't, I can't believe that. Um, well, I mean, I can believe it's just, uh, it's just, it's just amazing. You can set up your ESCs and all your different motors, servos, up to eight servos there. Uh, motors up to eight motors, but of course we're only be using four and four ESCs, and you get to tune your ESCs and make sure that everything's running really, really well. There's lots of things like PIDs and stuff which. Although I've been watching some videos on it, you know, I'm not even going to look at that just yet because the way it's set up on here, pre, most of it's just ready to go anyway. You know, you, you can set up, and as long as you get your 
yes use a mode to sort it out and you you do things like uh, when your arm you've got the choice whether to have your motors spinning or not spinning and you just so many different options and so that's what I'm doing I'm building my own quad as an alternative to the Hubson um, I'm still going to be doing a lot of things with the hubs and I've still got other propellers to test with them I've still got other antennas to play around with all sorts, I still want to fly it, I still want to play with it I still want to make um, you know, nice videos showing that it can be flown and it's not a too bad thing but rather than be upset if something does go wrong and I need uh, service I'm going to have other things to be able to do, other things to be able to play with this is all the PID tuning. I, I I wouldn't even play with any of these, but look at this look. So even if you do play with them, you can just reset back to um, you know back to the way it is, and you can save profiles. You can try lots of different things and save lots of different profiles and do all sorts of things with it. But that's way too advanced for me. Way too advanced. I just need to know things like fail saves and making sure the ESCs and the motors are doing what they're supposed to. And maybe stick some LEDs on them <laughs> and play around. We've got a black box flight recording, so you can record all your stuff and you can look at what's going on, on on your craft while you're out there flying and lots of things. Absolute lots of things. Really excited. Really excited. And this wasn't that difficult to set up. In actual fact, there's plenty of videos showing you how to do this. But the one thing I did run into it whenever with last night, I got a bit frustrated was I there's drivers. You gotta set up with drivers and these are the driver drivers here that you need to set up with and the, the videos that I watched show me how to use this didn't tell me how to set up the drivers so I got straight on I was so excited I got the flight controller in and uh, and it came to powering it up and getting it going it just wouldn't work and then I had to flash this and put the new firmware on here which I didn't know how to do I was too scared it said about bridging the boot and I was too uh, the bootloader I was too scared to do that until I actually saw somebody else do it and yeah, it's um, yeah, but it's been great. So this is where I'm getting my head into a little bit now. You know, and tomorrow I know it's going to be nice and clear in the morning. So first thing in the morning I'm going to go out and get a flight in. Uh, but I just wanted to share that, and more importantly, um, I wanted to share with you about the uh, the five DBI, the five DBI antennas, because having those antennas and them showing to be a problem. When you're putting on the tendon up the VSWR, that means it is going to have control issues. And like I say, the, the worst part about it is there is a danger, prolonged use of it actually damaging your output of your um, transmitter side of your handset. So be very careful. The What you've got to do to get around it is you've got to use a heavier cable. Now, I can only show you two heavier cables that I've got, and that's but this is no good. One, it's not shielded particularly on the outside, and it's it's too rigid. This is okay for making um, little antennas mess around with, but it's no good for um, what I'm talking about. What you want is the I think it's 316, which is a um, flexible coaxial cable, and of course it's sheathed. And then you can make up a pigtail, and you can make up to your SMA connector that goes into your handset down to your connector. Well, you can buy them. I've seen them. You can buy them on eBay. Um, they're a little bit expensive. The ones I saw were like seven, eight dollars, but you can buy them pre-made up to the Apex, which is the connector, and then to the um, the SMA connector. But then at least then you can run your five DBI antennas with one, not getting that problem with control. I knew it was happening on mine. I knew it, uh, but I just didn't know why. And it was it was when I put this on today, and I, I looked because I wanted to look at the VSWR. It's part of the reason why I did the mod on that um, Tyrannus. I saw it go up and I thought, oh no, this is no good, what's going on here? So I started to go looking and I've come across all these blooming videos telling me uh, about it because until you do these things and until you get them things, why why would you research particularly down that path? Mm, so there you go, but as soon as I know, you know, and I've tested it again to look at it myself and it, it makes sense, this is what I'm telling you guys because I know there's plenty of uh, Sonic out there, I know you've got a 5 DBI, be careful mate. And that, that's the mod you got to do. Okay, I'll put a link for what you need in the video. But this is uh, what you what you're gonna do. And I uh, even yeah yeah, and that's it. That's the end of the video. Okay, I'll catch you in the next one. I'll catch you when I do the flight video.
Take care, guys.